Hello everyone, welcome back. Gloomy day, beautiful day to get some work done in the garden and show you what's going on. We have a couple things we really wanna get done today. Number one, I got some berries in, blackberries, raspberries, and more blueberries, all container varieties. And I've got a couple rarer citrus that we need to get some pots for. So let me show you those real quick. Say hello to Jacques, everyone. Hey. He's decided that his new moniker is the Garden Hermit. <laughs> and so let's get a little comment for the Garden Hermit, which I think is an amazing name. So what we have here is an Australian finger lime. So this actually was neglected for quite some time, but as you can see, I've pruned it strategically, I've potted it up, and I don't want this to be in the ground. It's not really, there's not a good spot for it. I think it's a perfect container citrus. So we're gonna get a container for that. And then over here, we have a Buddha's hand, which as you can tell, it's in a little bit too small of a pot. It's looking a little bit stressed. It'll come back completely fine, but I do want a nice pot for that as well. Cause again, the Buddha's hand, it's really not the most desirable citrus to have tons and tons of, but it's a nice sort of curiosity citrus. So again, a pot is a great place for that. Over here are our berries. So I've got, this is a baby cakes blackberry from Bushel and Berry. And then over here, I've got a raspberry shortcake from Bushel and Berry. Both work really well in containers. And we did get a few more blueberries from them, which I'm pretty excited about. So we have blueberry jelly bean, never grown that one. We've got, actually they might all be blueberry jelly bean. I think they are. Yeah, they're all blueberry jelly beans. So we're gonna get three more containers for those and two for these. Before we get to that though, the garlic has a surprise for us. So take a look, everything's looking pretty good, but what do you see right here? It's like a little spear tip almost. This is a garlic scape because we're growing hard neck garlic. So once these really start to curl, they're almost all the way there. They probably need a little bit more curl on them. You actually harvest them. So we're gonna take them down to about there or so because this would open up and produce flowers and seeds, which we don't really need because we would much rather take this off, have the plant not devote that energy towards doing that and send it on down towards the bulbs, which is what we're really trying to harvest. But the thing about garlic scapes is they're a nice little delicacy and I've never had them before. So I'm excited to have grown them. Actually, look right here. This is a perfect example of when you should be harvesting a garlic scape. All right, so these peas are going off right now. These are shelling peas. So Jacques's gonna find a good one. I just wanna kind of show you guys the beauty of peas in the garden. So that's about the harvesting point. So maybe a little bit over, a honestly. A little over, you could maybe start feeling the ridges. Yeah. So the difference will be that something like this that's a little over. Yeah. Will actually be really good to like saute. Sure. Cause you're gonna get more of a starchy flavor out of these yeah, ones. But if you cook them, they will sweeten up. There you so go. That's, that's perfect picture size. perfect. Throw right. that in a pan, a little butter, a little dill, a little garlic. He's all about that flavor, guys. What do you Actually, think? These are really sweet. Are they? This is like pretty ideal. Let me try. Okay. Drop these into peas. All right, here we go. I've been just coming out in the garden and yeah. eating these every, ooh, I almost <laughs> dropped that, but I caught it. Oh, those are actually really They're sweet. Really good. For that size, I would have expected them to be a little bit more starchy. Here's one, this is, this is about where I would personally pick one, is right here. Something around this point. Yeah, and then for reference, like this, we could start to actually see the bumps. Yeah. That's gonna be starchy. Yeah, so those that's, are full size peas. That's, you might as well, you could just let it dry at that point. Yeah, you could yeah. let it dry or you could just shell these and cook them directly yeah. like this. Yeah. Definitely starchier. Yeah, not as good. No. Yeah. This is the size that I personally like to do, so I'm gonna pop this open and show you. So they are a little bit smaller and underdeveloped, but I find that they're way sweeter at this point. So that's just my personal preference to pop them in just like this. Over here, this is the Kevin Super Tomato, which is not named after me. It's named after my friend Kevin Forty. But take a look. Just this one flower stem has three trusses, like a triple truss. So you have one here, one here, and one here. And we're already starting to see little cherries forming, which is really crazy. So this is an experiment because I'm running this one completely unpruned. No suckers are being removed. And we're gonna go straight up top here. But over here, the tallest one on our lower and lean system is also a Kevin Super Tomato that I'm taking down to one single liter. So you can see I'm removing all of these. And it's just sort of an experiment to see, do I get production earlier or later? Obviously it looks like I'm getting production a little earlier on this one because these were transplanted at the same time and this is a lot further along and we even have development up on, on this truss right here. It's just a fun little experiment to see if there's a difference between this and just letting your tomato go absolutely wild like this. Plenty more updates here in the backyard, but right now we do have to get on over to Planter Paradise, which is my favorite place in San Diego to get ceramic pots for the blueberries, because I want to match the ones that I already have, and that's where I got them, and also the raspberry and the blackberry, and I want to get some sort of more decorative ones for the citrus, because they're really going to be 
a mainstay, probably on some pathway that will exist in the future here at the homestead. So we're gonna hop in the Epic Mobile and Jacques and I are gonna go there. I'm gonna show you kind of exactly what we're shopping for and how we're thinking about getting these pots. It's a really cool spot. I think you're really gonna like it. Say hello to the Epic Mobile, my friends. I got a new car. Finally, this is the first car I've gotten since I started driving. It's not even new, it's a 2018 Forerunner. But it's gonna be great because we can fill a ton of pots in here. I'm putting a roof rack up top so I can store lumber for all the building projects that we're doing. I can haul the trailer behind, get some free compost from the nursery, haul it on over, and actually save quite a bit of money. So I'm super, super happy to have this. So let's hop in and drive on over to Planter Paradise. So welcome to Planter Paradise, guys. Some of you have probably seen this before, but it's looking a little bit sparse today, but they've got a lot of stuff. I mean, racks on racks on racks of pots, as far as the eye can see. We're on the hunt right now for some terracottas, because their terracotta prices are really good. So this is where I got the terracotta last time, and it is picked clean, I'll tell you that. There's these three left, which we may just pick up, because the price is good. 40 bucks for a roughly 12, 13 gallon pot. It's not the same pot, but when you don't have any other options, I feel like we kind of have to do it. So we got the three for the blueberries here, which were the cheapies at 39 bucks. And then these guys here, I think we need two for raspberry blackberry. It's 49 bucks, still actually quite a good price. 18 by 16, so it's like 16, 17 gallons, which should be fine for a container blackberry. So we're gonna grab two of those, and then we're gonna get on over to glazed pots for the citrus. So for the citrus, we probably ended up with this. Not a lot of selection, like I said, but this is a very thick concrete. You can see just how thick it is down there. And they're not the cheapest, but it's pretty much all that there is that we like. So we're gonna go with these two for the citrus. We've got seven pots, three blueberries, a blackberry, a raspberry, two citrus, and all of this mix. We'll talk about some of the mixes. We potted up probably on the main channel because we're gonna do full grow guides on each of these plants. But this all in all was $300, which that's not a small amount of money for sure. But for seven pots, these two were half off. So basically I got one free. And then the bags, when you get them from a place like that and not a nursery, they end up being a little bit cheaper. So I would say to get what? seven different fruit trees or fruit bushes going. That's a pretty good price. While we were gone, this came and I actually didn't know if it would come or not. I, for a second, I just thought maybe I forgot to order, but it turns out I didn't. It is potatoes, more potatoes. We know I love potatoes from Wood Prairie Farm. So actually Jacques turned me on to these. I'd seen Wood Prairie Farm before, but I had never bought from them. And then I saw some of the stuff that he was growing and I got really excited and I want to grow different varieties if possible. So we'll probably do potatoes and grow bags this time around. But I will show you, first of all, the packaging on this is really impressive. Really, they did, really did a good job here. So the first one we have, this one is rose gold, rosy red skin, deep yellow flesh, stoked about it. I did a pound each. Jacques and I are gonna split them to save a little money. Adirondack blue, look at the color on that. That is just simply a wild color. I'm really excited about that one. Excellent roasted in salads and soups. Not grown any of these before, which again, very stoked about. So here we have Yukon Gold. Okay, I've grown a Yukon Gold before, but I didn't. I actually forgot I ordered that one. But just a classic one. Next up, we've got Russian Banana Fingerling. Okay, I'm, apparently I'm lying because I've also grown this one, but we just wanted more of the Russian Bananas. They're actually these potatoes right here that we had a decent yield on, and I wanna see if I can increase that yield this time around. I think I know a couple things I can improve on. Next up, we've got Prairie Blush. This one I think is really cool. Is this the one you grew, Jacques? Prairie Blush? Yeah, I haven't tried them yet though. So he has, he's grown them, but he hasn't tried them. Now I'm gonna grow them, we'll see how they go. And then finally, Huckleberry Gold, which I think you've also grown. I'll say that those taste amazing. So Zarak approved, the Garden Hermit approved, Huckleberry Gold is one of the best ones. So these are all gonna go in grow bags, probably not today, maybe sometime in the future, but stay tuned, really excited. Six, I think, new potatoes to grow. So I selected this little spot for our first citrus, which is the Buddha's Hand, which Jacques is grabbing right now. Really cool citrus, also known as a citron. It sort of looks like a weird yellow hand, which it has that name because of that. And it, there's no pulp inside. So when you slice it, you're typically gonna candy the peel or use it as like some sort of garnish on a drink or something like that. But this space I think is a really cool spot. This is a bench. This is actually the bench that's a memorial bench for my dad that we had at a family camp I used to go to when he, we got it brought back down and my mom brought it over here. So we have this nice little bench 
and I think we should put a Buddha's hand right next to it. It's gonna look really nice. This pot is like 130 pounds, so hopefully this is the spot it's gonna be because I really don't wanna move it. But we're gonna go in with the citrus mix. And this is just straight bag citrus mix, no modifications whatsoever. But I will talk a little bit. Let's read off what's on the back. We've got aged fir bark, lava rock sand, volcanic pumice, aged redwood, and peat moss. So the lava rock sand and perlite are pretty much all either gonna add drainage or aeration. And then the bark and the redwood and, and moss are gonna have a little retention and maybe some semblance of nutrition, but not a whole lot of nutrients in here, I would say, which is, means we're probably gonna have to do some fertilization maybe with a small more organic citrus tone, either or, either granular or liquid. Uh, so I'm going in straight with this, citrus and palm. And that actually almost wow. fills up the whole bag. <laughs> so we, we don't even need a second bag, thing. yeah. But you can see this texture. I mean, take a look. It's You can see the sand, you can see the pumice and the bark. It's pretty, pretty clear what's in this mix. But that is the biggest problem people have with their citrus in a container is they will 100% of the time almost overwater it. And that's what's going to cause the yellowing. That's what's going to cause the drooping. And then they think they made maybe a, a different problem. They might water it again and then they kill it or they over fertilize it and they kill it. So that's, that's probably the number one thing with citrus. So with this, we just want to come around, gently sort of cup that root, root ball, massage it out as best we can. You can see, look at that, starting to fan out a little bit. Don't need to do too much breaking up here, but even this mix, it's roughly the same exact mix. Uh, I, it actually may be the exact same mix. But let's go ahead and get it in. Might need to go a little bit lower. Let's dig it out just a little bit. But it's okay to have, on citrus, it's okay to have a little bit of the roots exposed at the top. That's actually not a bad thing. So there you go. And I'll backfill with some of this. We're probably gonna need a little bit more from the other bag. Yeah, this guy is gonna be a lot happier. It actually was doing quite well. Just in that small pot, all of this is new growth and you actually do have some flowers, but you were starting to see some weird sort of stress issues, mostly because that pot was drying out too fast, not a lot of nutrition in it. It's good to have it in this home, so we're gonna water it in and we'll head over for the finger lime. So the finger lime, short story on this, I've had it probably for two years, but I really just didn't have a home for it, especially when I was at the old Epic Garden. So I put it in a small pot and it languished for a while. I decided about a month ago to pot it up into this pot Ow, I just spiked myself. I pruned off a lot of these and it really has come back in full force. For those that don't know, it's called the caviar lime. It's a really cool structure to it. I'll put a picture up so you can get a sense of it. But it really could be completely fine in this pot. I just wanted in more of a forever pot, something that looks a little nicer. So Jacques and I are gonna try our best at least to get it out and get it in. On tr a trick here is to water it in first so that the soil stays together a little bit more and you don't just like completely ruin the root structure. Sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to get it out of the pot, but honestly, with a spiky, thorny citrus and a big pot, it's probably just not gonna be that fun of an experience regardless. Yeah. So let's see what we can do. Transplant success. We'll water this in, you already saw that. On to the next project. So out in the front yard, new hat, new problem. I kinda wanna show you what's going on. We have this sunflower bed that for a while, was, it wasn't really doing that well. It was light, it was a little bit chlorotic, probably low on nitrogen. So we did a fertigation, irrigation and fertilization at the same time. Found a pretty clever way to do it. These really came back, let me show you. So I mean, just from looking at the top, they're exploding with growth, but you have this nice, beautiful, healthy green growth. A lot of buds are finally coming out. Look at this one, this one's called Golden Bear. It's gonna look amazing once it fully opens up. This whole interior will actually open up. But some of these beds haven't been doing as well. These beans, for example, the soybeans, really a total wash, and these are looking a little bit light. So I'm gonna show you how we do it using something called an Easy Flow, which is basically a siphon that pulls fertilizer into your hose line so you can just water with a little bit of nutrients in the water. Okay, here's how this system works. I promise it's not as complicated as it sounds. So we have water coming from the main right over there. It's coming through this black hose. This black hose is going into the easy flow, which is over here. So it goes up, it goes into this black small tube, which comes in here, puts water into this canister, pressurizes it, mixes with the fertilizer that's in here, and then the pressure differential will pull water up into this clear tube, which comes around and goes in front and then goes into our hose system, which is the hose link, 
and then it will come out here. So you'll have fertilized water coming out right there. So Jacques just turned it on and you can see how it's working. It's filling it up right there. Okay, I'm out here in this bean bed that we talked about earlier. So I've got my fan attachment. It's really cool because the way that system is set up, you can put anything in front of it and apply water in any manner you want. So I can get this fan and you can actually see the coloration of this is a little bit different. It might not be easy to see on the camera, but I'll tell you what, it's a fragrant fertilizer and it, I can certainly smell it coming out. So it's quite fragrant and you know it's working. But the thing that's nice about fertigation specifically is I needed to water this bed anyways. I know I have a little bit of a nitrogen issue in this specific bed and I want to cycle that soil. I want to make sure that the soil life is nice and healthy. I want to make sure I'm feeding that soil, giving the plants what they need. And this is such an easy way to do it. And the other thing that's really nice about the Easy Flow specifically is it'll work with almost any water pressure, which I've had problems with siphoning in the past. And you can buy the parts. So if you break one piece of it, you don't have to buy a whole new one. You can just buy the parts of it. So it's really, really nice for that reason. I'm going to hit the sunflower bed one more time as well. But this is just a really cool little tip. I'll go into a, uh, more detail on it on the main channel, but I figured if you're here on the vlog, you get some of the little juicy details before we put it out on the main channel. So I'll finish watering and we'll move on. Everything in the front yard is nicely watered, nicely fertigated. Fun little hack, not something I would recommend doing every single time you water, but maybe once or twice a month can be a really good schedule on that. Jacques headed home. He had a skunk problem to deal with. Really frustrating past year. Seems like we've got earwigs, skunks, birds, and pretty much that's it. So it's a weird pest combination. Nevertheless, I will cap the day off with a couple loquats. The sleeper fruit. A lot of people will just walk by this tree and, and not think anything of it, but I tell you, it's one of the best fruits you're ever gonna eat. And look how prolific it is. I mean, come on now. <laughs> and that thing just grew for free. So those of you who remember the old Epic Garden, you guys know that that was the one tree on that property. And now the one big fruiting tree on this property just so happens to be a loquat. I don't know, kind of seems like it was predestined. And that kind of gets to some of the updates here. You know, it's been a crazy, crazy year and, and certainly a crazy week. And actually I've been finding myself having a hard time getting vlogs out and getting videos out because there's so much going on in the backside of Epic Gardening that a lot of you guys don't see or, or even really hear about. And so it's been pretty stressful on that side of things which is why I like to come out here specifically right about now at sunset time and just enjoy the space that I've built. And it just is really starting to look amazing and, and fill in. And I do want to show you a real quick tip on these loquats. Okay, you certainly don't have to do this. You could eat it, you just brush it off and eat it just like this. But one thing I like to do if I'm eating it fresh from right out in the garden is it's a very easy peel. You want to harvest these when they are roughly this size, nice and plump, a little bit of an orangish hue to them. But you have to remember, you don't just bite in and go for broke because they do have seeds in them, oftentimes quite a few, and they're quite large and hard. So what I do is I kind of grip it by the peel that I just took off like that, and I just kind of nibble around the outside. And you'll find they're very, very juicy when they're fresh. So I do it like this. You can kind of see that seed. I'll show you what the seed looks like. Man, one of the best fruits you'll ever eat. So the seeds are quite large and there's hundreds of them. So maybe I'll have a bunch of loquats popping up once all those fall down. But that's it for today. More vlogs coming soon once I can get a little bit of stress release out in the back end of Epic Gardening. But we'll be back. I really appreciate you guys. You've changed my life. You've changed the lives of my friends and family. Uh, it's just been a crazy ride here on Epic Gardening and Epic Homesteading, so I'm very thankful to you. I'll leave you with some cool shots of the homestead. And until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.